Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried and from the netherworld where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Like most parables, we are only given the minimal essentials, and yet it is up to each of us to fill in the details and then apply it to our lives as we try to live out the law of love, as Pope Francis says, is the foundation of the Christian faith, as everything flows from it. It isn't enough that we spend our time avoiding evil and sin. We need to put ourselves in the crucible of life in which we are called to give of ourselves and not just the leftover scraps for which we really had no need anyway. I've been blessed to serve in a community mental health center in Washington Heights where the clients have a long history of mental illness, abuse, homelessness, and rejection, and remind me every day how many Lazarus there are around us. Aching the scene with the rich man who is nameless, and Lazarus who is named, Lazarus was a common name at that time, apparently without a sense of purpose beyond maintaining his own comfort level, we see a situation that's all too common among us today. We are not told how the rich man gained his wealth, nor how the poor man Lazarus became poor, nor what his sores were from. Might they be emotional scars? as well as physical ones, based upon the rejection he felt. What is unmistakable is that the rich man never welcomed the poor man into his world. It appears more as a sin of omission rather than commission. For him, it appears that Lazarus doesn't even really exist. Thus, the Lord challenges us to spend less time in self-justification 
and more in opening our eyes to the needs of others. I have for years had a simple phrase on my office door, which reads, it doesn't cost anything to be kind to others, but it is everything. Changing the environment to be accessible to the needs of others is the challenge of the law of love. For if we are never open to see the needs of others, they will remain outside our door, a door that is shut and locked by our own self-centeredness. My family always reminded me that the challenge of the Christian faith is not merely how well we live the faith for our own well-being, as important as that is, but whether we practice it in relationship to others, for we are all God's children. In brief, we must notice and reach out to the Lazarus at our doors and welcome them in. And there are so many people, whether clergy or lay, who are the unheralded heroes of our time. Note further how the nameless rich man, when it was too late, realized the true goodness of Lazarus' life and the meaninglessness of his own way of life. And I can't go on without giving due note to that kindly little dog who did more for Lazarus than the so-called rich man. And by the way, on October 8th, following the Feast of St. Francis, we will have the blessing of animals, for truly they are a member of our family. Returning to the theme of Lazarus and the rich man, we see in stark terms how the income gap can create such a separation that to live as the other does becomes an unbridgeable chasm because defending oneself and one's lifestyle takes on a self-justified life of its own. This reading forces us into the uncomfortable position of considering what our personal attitude is toward the material blessings we have received and enjoy. What we have is not just for our own self-indulgence. This selfish attitude is the justice of the world, not the justice of the law of love. The rich man is not condemned for any evil acts or for his wealth per se. He was condemned for a lack of love. Notice the difference between the welcoming banquet of the father and the prodigal son, and the rich man's self-indulgence in which he ate alone. The Lord challenges us to show initiative to lend our time and resources to others, but first we must live as if others in need are even in our purview. It's interesting that when one takes on this attitude to care about others, whether at work, home, or anywhere, then helping others is no longer a bother or burden, but a welcoming challenge to truly put our faith in action. It becomes an almost spontaneous response because the most important things in life are not things, yet, this seemingly unquenchable thirst to be able to impress others with our wealth and power is a true barrier to a faith journey whose light is the law of love. At the same time, doing a good action for others also carries a risk as Christ asks his enemies at his passion. For what good deed did you condemn me? If our approach to others is to make them feel inferior, then we have put up a barrier of inaccessibility. We are ourselves the unbridgeable chasm, like the rich man who created a world in which Lazarus was put at arm's length and as if he didn't exist. While the Catholic faith has basic and undeniable dogma and truths, 
we hold dear, as well as inspiring prayers and rituals. If these do not dispose us to open the doors to those in need, their very underpinnings are threatened. Christ wants all to be saved, and the only way that can happen is to follow the gospel, the good news way he has shown us. How we approach others and allow them to approach us demonstrates how well we have put our faith in action with a loving and open attitude, not a closed mindset more concerned with condemning others rather than helping them. Lord, may the doors of our hearts be open, and may we, even in our days of struggle ahead, seek to treat others as you would do so that they remain in our side view and rear view mirrors rather than remain blind spots in our tunnel vision. <laughs>